Hello everyone, welcome to day two of Vlogtober. Uh, thank you for joining me again for another day. It is Saturday the 2nd of October today and I'm just getting ready. I'm actually um, packing some of this hair care because I'm doing, just dropped it, I'm doing a little sponsored post on Instagram with this brand, which I'll show you on there if you follow me there. Oh, the drawer's not shut pet peeve when drawers aren't shut properly. Um, but yes, I'm just brushing my hair, bringing a little bit of life back to it. So I've done this morning, I've had my cup of tea, I finished reading my book, which I'm gonna bring with me to lend to my brother's girlfriend, because she said, she saw me reading it and she said, oh, that's been on my reading list for a while. And I'm not gonna lie to you, it's been on mine because I see so many good reviews on Instagram. It was the Seven Husbands of Elizabeth Hugo. Me and my friends do a book club. I think I've mentioned this on here and we do it once about once a month annoyingly it was kind of i voted for this book it was either between this one or a book about north korean people who have escaped north korea giving their account of living in the country um which did sound really interesting but i don't know i just uh, it sounds very depressing you know when just life is depressing and all the news is so depressing the last thing you want to do like when i read a book i really want to escape reality and the last thing i was in the mood for was to read about human rights abuses i know it's very important but you know what i mean like sometimes you don't want to you just don't you're not in the right headspace for that in a book so i thought oh a nice little chick flick type kind of book you know it's got amazing reviews i do not agree with those amazing reviews i'll insert the clip of when i finish the book well that was rubbish sorry but that was absolutely that was such an obvious ending to a really bland book <laughs> scathing reviews but such is the truth what a waste of time i don't recommend it at all but i'm gonna take it home and um yeah give it to my brother to lend out because someone else might as well get some use out of it but yeah i'm just sprucing myself up because like i say i'm just gonna pop home for the weekend because i want to see my cat i've got some parcels to pick up <laughs> mainly want to see my cat and i think i'm gonna go to some charity shops for my family it is secondhand september if you've been living under a rock, you may not know, but it's secondhand September. Oh, it's not, it's October. What is wrong with me? It's only just dawned on me that secondhand September is long gone until 2022. So that's that. That just kind of sums me up. Um, anywho, let's put on a little bit of makeup. I'm really sorry that Vlogtober number one was a little bit, it was a little bit haphazard. I'll tell you the truth of the matter. The truth of the matter is I kind of forgot about it. Basically, my... My friend from primary school, we went to the same, my friend from primary school, we went to the same secondary school and then we went to the same uni, but she was in the, I took a gap year, a gap year. I didn't do any gap year stuff. I just kind of worked and saved up money. But anyway, the point was she was in the year above me. One of her friends I became friends with, her name is Grace. Grace, if you watch this, that was a long story about how we actually met. But anyway, she vlogs and her vlogs are incredible. I've talked, pretty sure I've talked about 99.9% .9 sure I've talked about her vlogs on here before but yeah they're very comforting vlogs she lives in London too and she's doing vlogtober this year and she kind of I don't want to say challenged me but she basically said join me won't you and um so I am that's that is the story of vlogtober and I basically kind of half agreed to it then I had a shoot yesterday as you saw and I completely forgot about the fact it was the first of October so I kind of started filming part way through the day and then just hoped nobody would realise. So yes, that's the truth of the matter. I kind of forgot and then started filming halfway through the day. But I hope you enjoyed Vlogtober number one. Thank you for challenging me, Grace. I will link her channel down below if you want to check out her vlogs. They are very comforting. She sings, she dances. No, she doesn't dance. <laughs> she maybe she does dance, I don't know. I don't know. How well do you know a person? But she does sing really well and plays piano. So I do recommend checking her channel out if you are a watcher of vlogs. I can't actually remember if I filled you in on my on the meal last night. I'm using the e.l.f. under eye setting powder. I'm running out of it. As you can see, I'm a big fan. Yeah, last night the meal was... It was a lovely little impromptu meal. The shoot was in Soho, so that's why I was wandering around Soho. So instead I'm going to use the Beauty Bakery flour powder. Um, but yeah, the meal last night was a nice impromptu meal. I highly recommend Mildred's. It's one of my favourite places. I will say I don't recommend the 
starters that we got. It was the Szechuan smashed cucumber and the lemongrass watermelon. I don't know what it was. The lemongrass watermelon had pickled onion on it or pickled cabbage and it was just I don't know it wasn't savory enough for me it didn't it didn't really do it for me and I didn't like the peanut on top but I'm not really a I'm not too much of a peanut fan and then the Szechuan smashed cucumber was just a bit slimy so yeah I'm a bit disappointed because their starters are usually amazing but the main course was really good really recommend their vegan or oh, the whole menu is vegan by the way um and I really recommend their vegan Korean chicken burger Korean fried chicken oh so good they also do gluten-free buns if you're gluten-free as well i'm not gluten-free but i did try going gluten-free for a little bit and i went there in that time frame and yeah they were they were lovely they were really really accommodating so it's in soho they have one in king's cross they have one in camden one somewhere else as well i think it's at dawson not sure nude by nature palette um i'm thinking for vlogtober just so you know what to expect i'm thinking that not every single day is going to be a vlog um, because some days it's just boring like I literally just work all day I stay in the house all day unfortunately I'm trying to break that cycle of working from home and not ever leaving home because that is just not healthy for anyone but um, yeah some days are just boring so I'm thinking on some days where I know it's going to be boring I will put something else out for example I got asked about laser hair removal recently because I did have laser hair removal on my armpits legs bikini area uh, I kind of lots of different places I didn't actually ask for I'll go into that in that video <laughs> the lady just I guess she just took her initiative and thought there's a little bit of hair here let's just do here like she started shaving my neck at one point I was just like I started to feel insecure about my neck what are you shaving my neck for very odd anyway that's a whole experience in itself and let me tell you when you know the full story you will agree that it truly was an experience. It will become clear when I finally do a video on it, which I'm thinking I'll do in Vlogtober as a kind of replacement day for a vlog. Little things like that, like a maybe a Q&A day, just, just to keep things interesting, you know? Variety is the spice of life after all. Yeah, if you've got sensitive skin and you're thinking about laser hair removal, I've got some things to tell you. Yeah, if you've got any recommendations for something you know that you want to hear me talk about then just let me know and if i know enough about it i shall i shall do just that I'm just gonna put a little bit of perfume on this is the floor street wild vanilla orchid it makes me sneeze i won't lie to you it's really like powdery it's a vanilla -y, powdery deep it almost smells vintage i feel like the bottle looks vintage and it almost smells vintage kind of like you know the smell of old curtains but nice like that kind of nostalgic, musky, regal kind of smell. That's what this is in my head. It's got vanilla in it, but it's like a very deep vanilla. Um, so yeah, not your typical vanilla scent, but yeah, I'm just adding a little bit of this. It really does last as well. Um, I really want to get Arizona Bloom. That's on my birthday list. Birthday month. <laughs> Definitely on my birthday list. That one's a lot more summery daytime appropriate it's got coconut in it but it doesn't smell overly coconutty beautiful vegan scent um but yes anyway i'm gonna leave now <laughs> about two hours and film today and now i'm a slipper person you're a slipper person now are you honestly show the vlog where did you get them from i'm a bit ashamed where are they from uh these are from primark oh wow. but the issue is is anything Thanks. i've ever bought from primark i've always kept for at least like two three years I'm in all fairness not advocating primark but my blue dressing gown which i've had since i was probably about 14 years old is still going strong cost per wear you know what what you get to an age where you get excited about finding the perfect pair of slippers. Who's it? Oh my goodness. He remembers. Is it coming back to you now, Finn? Oh, it's coming here. Yeah. Did you miss me? Oh, I love you so much, Finn. You love me. Special effects. Poor content. Oh, we don't like that. We don't like that. Hey. Does he look really cute? Yeah. Home sweet home. I've got a couple of packages that have been sent to my home address. And I thought I would open them for you. Whilst we're here, 
Should I s I want to sit on the bed. One by the body shop or from the body shop. It says autumn is brewing. Ooh, press release. Cozy up with the new launches from the body shop. <gasps> Vanilla pumpkin. I'm not going to lie to you. The body shop has really impressed me recently. I never really, I used to be into them a little bit when I was a teenager, I'd use their like tea tree range and I really enjoyed it. But then I kind of got a bit bored by their releases. I felt like they didn't do anything that interesting, but their spring release or summer release of the Daisy range and the raspberry range, incredible. They were on sale because obviously it was end of summer and I picked up a couple to stock up. But vanilla pumpkin, that sounds right on my street. Let's have a look what's inside oh wow oh yeah look at that what a lucky duck i am um so we've got their vanilla pumpkin hand cream vanilla pumpkin fragrance bath bomb i will be giving that to somebody else because i can't use bath bombs but amazing mm, that smells incredible very sweet very vanilla-y but i love vanilla vanilla and sweetness definitely up my street shower cream Incred, and then an in shower face mask pumpkin face mask it smells pumpkiny i know pumpkin enzymes can be apparently quite good for the skin so i'm in i'm very intrigued by that i've never tried any of their glass pot masks and then last but not least is one of their little lip balms i have actually tried one of these before i think i tried their watermelon one they're in these little bullets kind of like eos style Remember the EOS craze? God, they really did take over the world, didn't they, with a lip balm? Low key, I didn't love the EOS lip balms. I bought them because I think they were in, they were everywhere. They were in every music video and high street shop. And this kind of has that vibe. So it looks like a nipple. It's got a tint. That's well, quite a pretty color, actually. Not too brown, a nice nude brown. Okay, cool. Thank you so much, Buddy Shop. Very excited to try. I'll probably give this to my brother because he's just got a new job. So it's a little gift. And also he loves bath bombs. Link my bath bomb video where I bought him a load of bath bombs if you want to check it out. Um, but I can't use them because I have sensitive skin, you know. Um, and then I also got a second parcel in the mail. This one is by Ren. From Ren, sorry. They're waiting for me to leave to go to the charity shop. So, so I'm trying to do this quickly. Oh, it's their bio retinol, retinol, retinoid range. Oh, thank you so much. I love, I think I've tried, was it this or was it the retinol oil? I've tried something from them that was an oil that I really enjoyed. This is their bio retinoid youth oil, youth concentrate oil. Exciting. Youth serum, youth cream. And... Is it retinol? I'm gonna have to do a bit of reading about this because I'm not sure if it's retinol or... Yeah, I'm coming. Be two minutes. Try this, I'll try these tonight because me as well, use them on camera. Thank you ever so much. Aren't I a lucky duck? Let's go. Penis. Penis. <laughs> Look at this. <gasps> da -da -da -da. I might take this with this umbrella with me actually. IKEA, if anyone's wondering. IKEA family. Okay, and we're off to the charity shops in the rain. First stop is Oxfam. Just waiting for Lisa. She's slow and steady, but she'll win the race in the end. Here she is. Oh, did they? Well. Oh, I didn't realise. I didn't realise. Oops. Autumn, autumn. Dress for autumn. Looks quite cute. Success. Boxing book. Looks like homemade oat milk to me. Feel really homely. Yeah. Yeah. Second hand mugs. It's like a good cover. Book club.
Russian moving mountains. <laughs> I've never seen lipstick like that. Yes. Yeah. It's lip balm. What is it? It's not very hydrating. But... Thanks. I get this, you know. The little ties at the cuffs. But that doesn't look great with this outfit, but it's quite smart, like a winter coat. I'm home now. We got rained on big time. So I'm really feeling like a nice kind of cozy Saturday afternoon. Um I'm thinking I'm gonna do I'm gonna finish editing today no yesterday's vlogtober gonna get that uploaded start editing this today's vlogtober god it's all getting on top of me already um and then i'm going to run a lovely bath i'm going to use the new skincare i was really kindly gifted by ren do a little skincare routine um and then strictly come dancing is on later which i never usually watch i have to say i'm not a strictly fan um but i really like robert webb <laughs> i really just our peep show is just one of my all-time favorite shows and i just really enjoyed i watched it on the off chance last week and i just really enjoyed it don't get me wrong the the kind of you know like when you used to watch x factor back in the day and they fill it up with so much buffer at least there's no adverts because it's bbc so at least there's no adverts but they do fill it up with so much just spiel just let me see the dances all i want to see is the pretty costumes the music the dancing um but yeah i'm really enjoying that so you're gonna watch that later and just have a chill one. But I thought I would show you what I got at the charity shops. A little haul, secondhand haul, if you will. Um, first up, I got some books. So the first book I got, well, actually, I'll show you these three first because they're all kind of like coffee table books. However, I have, I have a bit of a plan for these. So I got one, The Impressionists by William Gaunt. Gaunt, sorry. God forgive me um and then I got this one which is Moe's Years at Giverny I don't really know what that is I'm guessing I'm gonna find out but it says Beyond Impressionism and basically um it's filled with his paintings obviously prints of his paintings that's not one of his paintings but um it, it talks about his career and whatnot but it also has lots of his paintings and my plan for this is essentially in one of my recent vlogs I talked about the gallery wall I wanted to do potentially in the living room you know when I mentioned if you watched it I mentioned that we have a really big blank wall with quite high ceilings and I really feel like something needs to go up there to balance everything out but but I wasn't sure if I wanted to go the traditional Instagram kind of print vibe I still I do really like a lot of prints I see on Instagram but some of them I just they're quite generic I don't want it to be a very generic print wall and I thought I had the bright idea because my mum's having a big clear out and she has quite a few sort of frames and like old paintings and stuff or maybe like pictures and paintings that aren't quite my cup of tea I figured I could take those off her hands repurpose them maybe paint them a little bit if I don't like the colour of the wood and then get some of these prints from this book and put them in the frames and have them on the wall is that not an ingenious idea this was considering the prints are usually when i was looking online they're usually sort of 20 to 30 pounds per print and then you have to buy the frame as well this whole book was three pound 49 and i still want to use it as a coffee table book as well i'm not going to take every single painting out of here but i just thought that was quite an ingenious idea that i hadn't heard of before so it might already be a thing but I, I figured I'd give it a go and it's good because in charity shops they have if you go to the art section they've got um quite big books so you can try and get like quite a big print like this is a oh, this is an A3 book and um I might still invest in some bigger prints just to kind of balance out the whole gallery wall vibe but um yes we shall see so that's those ones and then I picked up this one which is Dali which has got obviously surrealist Kind of pictures and paintings and whatnot so bizarre so i'm not all of them my cup of tea but i just i, I love how these paintings really make you think they really make you have a bit of a double take like this one look at that. what's that mug doing in the desert how is it hanging from that thread i don't know but i want to know that's those three so they came to about eight pound i think and then i picked up this book which was the only book i picked up to actually read and it's the margaret atwood 
stone mattress. I think it's a short book of short stories and it was in the £1 section. Um, I haven't actually read any Margaret Atwood. 99.99999% sure she wrote Handmaid's Tale. Forgive me if she didn't. I'm pretty sure she did. Not read it. Seen the series. Nearly at the end of series the four, I think. I think the concept is very intriguing. Obviously, a lot of what she wrote about and the, the premise is not something new. Like, there are actually things that do happen to women and have happened to women. The main actress, I know it's the whole anti-heroine thing, but the main actress and her main love and interest, just the chemistry for me, just, I just don't get it. And I don't really get her. I can't really read her facial expressions as an actress. I don't know if that's the point. I think the cinematography, beautiful. I love Serena. Obviously, she is a class A biatch. She is awful 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 her and her husband but the actress like the way she you really hate her like she is so well acted to make you despise her and that whole back and forth between her and the main character that was that is like the highlight of the whole thing I think um it's such an intriguing relationship anyway that's my mini review <laughs> I do recommend watching it if you're into it it's just incredibly depressing and I think when as I said earlier in this video, when the world is depressing, when news are, is so depressing, you don't always want to watch a depressing series. You want to watch something that's like an escape. So yes, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, Margaret Atwood. I love short stories. The, the cover intrigued me. It was one pound. Gonna give it a go. And I also got some trousers for work. Quite boring, but I'll try them on in a minute. Just because I thought they might be the right length. A little bit boring, but I will try them on for you. And then the creme de la creme, the pied de resistance was the coat that I did end up buying. Bum, ba -dum, bum. Let me just get changed and I'll put the trousers on and the coat and then have a little talk through my thinking. I think these are a beautiful fit. A really, ow, ow. <laughs> Sorry. My knee keeps feeling like it's gonna bend the wrong way. Does anyone else have that? Sometimes my knee, it feels like it's gonna bend the other way, the wrong way. Ow, God. <laughs> That really hurt. Anyway, let me show you these trousers. These are the perfect length. Look, if anything, they're a little bit too short, but I'll take that. I'm not showing these off very well, am I? But, and then this is the coat I got. It's a long line camel coat and it just feels exquisite. And it's got this belt, but I, I like how there's no loops so you can wear it with the belt. But if you don't wear it with the belt, it doesn't look like it's only half of a coat. So really tough with this. Now I'm not gonna lie to you, it was expensive. I went back and forth on whether to buy it. It was 80 pounds. A lot of money for a charity shop, but for the quality and considering I was thinking of maybe investing first hand in a coat if I couldn't find one second hand, because essentially I've been looking for one of these coats for a long time, but every coat that I tried on, it just looks so big on the shoulders. Whereas this one is the perfect fit on the shoulders. It doesn't look like I'm wearing my granddad's clothes. Do you know what I'm saying? It's the perfect fit and doesn't look like a flasher's coat because that's the other thing. I fell in love with quite a few trench coats and then after kind of thinking about it, I thought, mm, you know what? People might think I'm going to do something freaky, which obviously I'm not. Whereas this one I feel like is quite sophisticated, if I say so myself. And I was thinking, like I say, of investing first hand and I had a little look. Some of these fast fashion brands, like I looked at some sustainable brands, nothing was taking my fancy. Considering I'm quite sure I didn't want something too oversized and it would make me look just swamped. And I looked at one on um, And Other Stories, £229 for a very similar coat to this. So pretty good haul, all in all. I'm going to tidy up, have my cup of tea, and then I'll probably see you again when I'm running my bath. Want some help there? Do you want some help? Careful. Come here. Look, you want to go under? You want them this way? <laughs> you want to go underneath? Hey. These are nice and cozy. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, I'll leave you to it. Don't you worry. And just like that, it's dark. Why do I take so long to edit things? Um, it's definitely time for a bath. I'm gonna use this face mask now, let you know what I think. I'm gonna have to keep trying this face mask. I'm not sure how I feel about it. A shower face mask. 
I mean, it felt nice, didn't sting my skin. I'm gonna have to keep using it. Let's, I feel a bit bizarre because I've just been watching Squid Game and I feel like it's quite weird to go from watching that and then just talking normally after watching people being killed. Has anyone, anyone watched Squid Game? I feel like a lot of people have. It was described to me as a mix of Hunger Games and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, which piqued my interest. Anywho, I'm going to use the Bioretinoid Youth Serum. It says gently massage onto clean skin until fully absorbed. My skin's a bit damp because I like to apply product to damp skin. That smells like, I don't think it's fragranced, but maybe it is fragranced. Yeah, it does have a bit of perfume towards the end of the ingredients list. It, this smells exactly like Record Leg Cider, the passion fruit Record Leg Cider, to be precise, which is vegan and gluten free. If anyone is vegan and celiac that's watching. It's got niacinamide quite high up the ingredients list, that one, so I love niacinamide. I never, I always used to think that niacinamide broke me out, but I'm such a convert. It's so good for breakouts. I don't know why I thought it broke me out. Don't know. Anyway, I'm going to go in with their moisturiser next. This is the Bioretinoid Youth Cream. All this stuff says suitable for sensitive skin, by the way, and so far I would agree. Nice thickness, not too thick, but feels nice and nourishing. Like, you know, sometimes it says a cream, but it's definitely a lotion. This is, this is intense enough to be plastered as a cream. Last but not least, I'm gonna use the Bioretinoid Youth Concentrate Oil. Now, why do I think I've used this before? Is this a new range, new plant alternative to retinol? Maybe they've reformulated it. I'm so sure that I've used this before. And I really liked it when I used it, but maybe they've reformulated it. Does anybody know? Has anybody used to use the old one or is this just... Oh, I should know this stuff before I share it with you, but I just... I don't know and it doesn't say in the package. Okay, it's got a plant-derived alternative to retinol, organic rosehip oil and sea buckthorn. I love rosehip oil and I love sea buckthorn. I haven't looked into this plant alternative to retinol, but it doesn't say... Bacchial, so I'm confused as to what it is because that's often marketed as a natural alternative to retinol. And he's still here. All these hours later. Who's that? I'm going to wrap up day two here because I'm just going to watch Strictly Come Dancing with my mum and then go to bed. But thank you so much for watching day two. I will see you tomorrow for day three. Thanks for watching again, and I will see you very soon. Bye. You are definitely going to get bored of me by the time October is up. <laughs> wow. Oh my god. Two, three. like kissing. Yeah, this is how they end up having a fair. Not surprising, is it?